Okay, boys and girls, now we're going to go ahead and read Shipwreck Season. It is a historical fiction. Remember that a historical fiction is a story set in a particular historical period. In historical fiction, the background of the story is based on fact, right? But the story itself is not true. So often the story will revolve around important changes or movement from history. Let's go ahead and read Shipwreck Season. By Donna Hill. It is 1880 on Cape Cod, Massachusetts. 16-year-old Daniel is spending time at the Lifesaver station with the surfmen, who risk their lives to save people lost in shipwrecks along the rocky coast. Daniel has led a quiet life up until now, with very little adventure. He has rowed boats on calm rivers, never on a rough ocean. Now, with his dog Trueheart, Daniel watches from the shore as the surfmen conduct a practice lifeboat drill in the pounding seas. The men ran along shore until the captain called, Stop! They sped the boat to the surf, lifted it off its carriage, and got the carriage back up on the beach. They took life belts from the boat and strapped them on. The captain put the steering oar in place. The surfmen grasped the gunwales on either side of the boat and waited tensely. Daniel took his place at the stern beside the captain. As something on which to launch a boat, the ocean was different from what Daniel had known as a child playing in the surf. Great mounds of water roared in toward the beach, crested, tumbled over and came one after another in wild surges of power before turning into foam. The captain was studying the sea so intently that Daniel wondered if he were doubtful about launching today. Rough, isn't it, sir? Not bad. What are we waiting for? The slatch. The captain did not break his attention. Slack water followed by a backwash to sea, usually the seventh wave after the biggest. Now Daniel saw that waves were not all the same size. Big ones rolled in one after another, then a small one followed and crested. The captain shouted, Now! The men rushed the boat into the sea, with Daniel and the captain shoving from the stern. They all ran out waist deep. As each section of the boat swept free, a man scrambled aboard facing the stern and wrestled his oar into place. The sea rose up and took the boat. The captain leaped in over the stern and seized the long steering oar. Pull, he cried, pull. The boat lunged through the water. Daniel fell back. He slipped in the pushing waves but kept his eyes riveted on the rowers, their huge arms and shoulders pulling in mighty strokes as they concentrated on the captain. The captain was standing upright at his oar in the stern. Foam crashed over his back. Spray flew high overhead. Daniel saw him steer away from the biggest waves until they broke. But when one came that he could not avoid, he called for speed and sent the boat head on. A great sea broke over the bow and drenched the men. They did not falter or even wince. Daniel was astounded by the surfmen's skill, power, and daring, and by the beauty of the white surf boat flying through glittering spray. He cheered, prancing, sloshing, and waving. A roaring mountain of sea came at him, ready to break over him. He saw it just in time, turned, and plunged toward shore. Let's think about, why do you think the surfmen were... The dog ran up and down the beach, barking exuberantly as Daniel came splashing through the surf. She rushed at him, tail pumping madly, and nuzzled her cold nose into his hand. So you think I'm all right after all, do you, old girl? Daniel laughed, roughing up her shaggy head. Together they patrolled the beach, watching the surf boat. Out past the breakers, the boat capsized. The men bobbed in the sea. The dog stiffened and stared out intently. She did not relax until the boat was righted and the crew back at their oars. Ready to go to the rescue, right, old girl? Daniel asked. He told her she was a noble dog. Coming back with the boat looked even more hazardous than launching. 
The boat flew in ahead of a great swell, the captain standing in the stern, spray breaking around him. Any oarsman, even the athletes of Daniel's club, would be impressed by this crew. The rowing Daniel and his friends did on a calm river, with nothing to think about but stroke and speed, was mere play compared to the efforts of these mighty oarsmen, which were not for sport, but in preparation to save lives. It was no small thing to be a surfman, Daniel decided. It would be no small thing to be counted as one among them. The dog ran up. Okay, boys and girls, don't forget that if you want to reread the story, you can always go to Pearson Realize. Okay, so you can do your assignments for today. Remember, you have to do some assignments with this story and the story of the Titanic. Okay, if you need me, you know, you can always email me, boys and girls.